Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. And today we are going live to teach you how to paint some beautiful roses and some feathers in a lovely urn. And we have a lovely little saying here. Everything's just lovely today. <laughs> so um, it's called Blessed and it's already on our website, tipsyartist.com. So you can find all the supplies that you need. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just get right into it. And so I'm going to be using a pretty big brush to do a nice light wash into the background. So I'll be mixing up a light gray. And let me go ahead and give you a little bit of a color reference here with the kit. So we've got some titanium white and some Mars black. And I've gone ahead and placed those here on my plate. And I have a little bit of water. I'm going to go ahead and grab that and place it on my plate here too. Let's take a little bit of the white, actually a lot of white. So you can see it's a pretty big amount. And then we'll go ahead and grab a little bit of some black too. And welcome everybody out there. I hope y'all are having a great week. It's real quiet here in Guthrie. So we're going to be opening up a little bit later on today. But we'll see what happens because it is super windy outside. It's not windy indoors though. So y'all can still come see us, but. We have like hundreds of paintings for sale. They're going to be really cheap, 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 like $10 a piece. So if you do need last minute Christmas gifts, you should come see us here. And then I'm just going to be finishing up this lovely painting this morning too. Hello. <laughs> Seeing more people actually popping up. All right. So I've got a really light gray mixed up. So again, lots of white, a little bit of black. And then let's go ahead and just wash this over the surface. Also, a little bit of explanation here on what's happening in the background. I always do the master line art for you, and I provide a traceable and some transfer paper. So you can create all of this. It's super easy. You just follow my lines that are already on there, and it just transfers right to the canvas. It's super easy. And then we also provide a lovely permanent marker for you in the kit and it bleeds through the paint just like that. So it's awesome. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can actually just do all of your background first, let it set up and dry, then come back in with the line art and the transfer paper, and then place that on over the surface and do all your line work on top. That's one way to do it. Or you can do exactly what I'm doing. So you can just firm it all up, every line with that permanent marker, and just know that it will stay in place and you can just do a light wash of this really pretty light gray into the background. And then, you know, with that permanent marker too, it's real easy to just to follow up right over the top as soon as it's dry at the very end and just redo all of your lettering there too. And it's good practice. So yeah. All right, so this is looking really pretty and you can certainly make this a little bit darker. Um, let's see. Oh, I was hoping it would show. It used to. I did have a model. Hold on a second. It's really close. I think what I'll do is I'll place it behind me where the lamb is, but this is my, it's getting, there's my model. <laughs> Let me go ahead and place that behind me. All right, so that way, you can see it. You can see it while I go. Maybe if my head stays out of the way, but you'll see this one too that I'm working on. But that's another example there for you too. And I do have a much darker gray in the background. You can certainly work in some of those darker colors if you want. I'm going to keep mine fairly light today, but I'm also going to just kind of lightly dust in a little bit of that darker charcoal gray into the mix. So basically what I did is I just took that brush there and I just pushed into a little bit more black and you can see it's a little bit darker. And I'm just going ahead and doing a light sweep. I keep that brush really over to the side parallel to the canvas. And I'm just gonna lightly kind of dust in on the sides there. Light feathering out just brings in a little bit of that darker charcoal in the background. 
And the reason why I didn't really continue in a lot here, I'm going to run into the vase color there, so it won't matter because we're going to cover that up. So I basically just need just enough to get in on the sides and just pull that in and get a nice light little coat of that that just kind of rests right over the top. All right, it's just that easy. So that's awesome. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse out that brush. And then we're going to continue on with some different colors here for our roses in the background. And what I'm going to be using now is I call this my mama brush. So she is a half inch flat uh, Taclon, gold Taclon brush. And I already have a lot of white here nearby. Um, on a plate from yesterday, I've got a lot going on. I'm going to see what's still got some red with your painting kit though we have let me show you what we've got we've got cadmium red and then also some primary magenta so i'm going to mix both of these together equally and then that will give us a really pretty cool red and then that's actually what i had mixed up from earlier so i'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of that just about a place paint here so i'm going to go ahead and place this off to the side and then I'm going to grab a little bit of white with that. Lighten it up quite a bit here, but I still keep some of that pure red going. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and push this into that little rose shape there. And it looks a lot like a lumpy circle at this point. And that's okay, because we're going to be adding in more patterns here in just a moment. And then our next shades will be a little bit more neutral. So I need to go ahead and grab a different mix here. I'm going to be using the primary yellow. Let me get that in the shot. There we go. And I basically want to leave a little bit of that to work with, but also I want to mix up kind of a nice creamy color. So I've got a little touch of that primary yellow, big dollop of the white, and then a tiny little touch of the black. So you've got this light heather gray mixing with that really pale yellow. So it's creating more of a creamy tone, almost leaning more towards that khaki. And I'm also going to make sure I've got some of this darker charcoal nearby. And then a little bit of just the pure yellow stays intact too. But I want to make sure I've got all of these different shades to tap into. So dark charcoal, this kind of creamy color with a little bit of that khaki color too. And then of course we keep our white and then our primary yellow nearby as well. Okay, so a little bit different here on these. I'm gonna show you two different techniques for making some roses. So this one here is a little bit more textural. And uh, let's see, a couple of questions I'm seeing out there. What kind of paint do you use? So I always use, this is the paint that always comes with our kit here. So I always teach from this set and uh, we do sell it separately on our website, but then we also sell it with the kit too. hope y'all can see that. Sorry. It's kind of super close up, but uh, Royal and Langnickel paint it's really good. I love it. It's very thick. And um, so that's what paint we use. And then thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit of a textural look here. I'm going to grab a little bit of white and then go ahead and work this into that light pink right over the top. And I'm just making what kind of looks like little parentheses. And I kind of smush it on. That's a great artistic term, isn't it? Kind of smush. <laughs> but a little bit of some firm pressure and almost like a little parentheses. And I wiggle the brush a little bit too as I go. So that's my first layer here is 
just almost like little parentheses, like a, a light circular pattern. And then I'm going to come in with the darker color next. So we will work in with a little bit more of that red. Grab a little bit of water here too. Soften that up a little bit. The paint's really thick, so I need to add just a little bit of water. Now I'm going to make a little spot right in the center. So it looks like a little comma. That's our little shadow right in the middle of the rose. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lightly push in and around those other light white highlights. We're going to add a little bit of shadow now. And you can do every single rose this way. So it's just that repetition, a pattern where you basically take in the white first and the little, like again, just feels like a little bit of a parentheses. And then you come in with your darker shadow next. So we're going to come in with a little bit of red on this one. Again, it looks like a little comma right in the center. That's that shadow right in the middle. And then just a real light little shadow around the white with that darker color. And then that's it. All right, so I'm going to show you a different way. This way follows the line art pattern on our canvas a little bit more. So with this one, we're going to work in a little bit more of our um, darker charcoal here. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of our black and the white. I'm using my little bit brush. Little bit brush in my kit is essentially just a round brush. That's what they call this, just a round brush. And the material of the brush is just a golden Teflon. So I'm going to follow the little lines that are already there. Get those reinforced. So these roses are going to be a softer color, more like a white rose, light creamy rose. And so, of course, we've got the line art. You can just follow that. Or if you are trying to freehand it, to me, it's a very, uh, very much like the pattern we were just doing, where it feels like you're making, like, again, that, uh, like a parentheses, just kind of following that all the way around in a circular pattern. So we're going to start with all this charcoal first, get that worked in. Again, that's just a mix of our black and our white. Beautiful. Okay, now we're going to come in with a little bit more of that white now. So still using the little bit brush, which again is just a round brush and come in with some pure white. And I'm going to push in to that gray in the negative space. Just kind of wiggle the brush around following that pattern. And you definitely want a little bit of that soft blend between the two colors. So you wanna work quickly between the two and if your gray is already a little bit set up and dry, of course, you can always come back in and re-wet that a little bit and get that soft blend between the two of those. Now we're going to follow up with a little bit of that cream color that we mixed up. that light circular pattern. So it just gives that hint of a nice creamy rose happening. And once you get the hang of roses, you'll really enjoy them because they're just, they're pretty fast. And just kind of pushing on this color. 
I'm gonna get a nice blend and then I'm gonna come back in over the top with a little bit more of a shadow. Again, we'll reemphasize that shadow. Let's grab a little bit more of that darker charcoal. Again, you just kind of wiggle your hand a little bit and take it around in a, a, just a real soft circular pattern. And then I'll hit it again with some more white. And real light hand, and I just barely kind of go over the top now. I, I shift how I hold the brush where you can see I'm holding it a lot more out to the side, so it allows just a lot more paint to just kind of graze across that surface area. Makes it a lot more textural. So that brush, again, is more parallel to the canvas, almost just right out to the side. And I'll hit with just a little bit of color in here too, just a tiny amount. So we're gonna pick up that red just one more time, a little bit of water too, and just a little light touch, just right in the middle, a little comma, a little light hand. And maybe just a few little accents of that lighter pink running through there. And we're gonna take a little touch of that primary yellow that we had in the very beginning. Add a little bit of water to that. And we'll just barely touch down a little bit of yellow in here too. Just real light hand. Barely touch on the side. All right, so we have some beautiful roses. And if you're not a fan of too much of that yellow, you can always just kind of dust back in a little bit more white, soften that back up a little bit to where it looks a little bit more just like a light cream. And some of you might actually want a lot more yellow too. So that's just kind of depends on what your taste is and your decor and what you like. All right, so it's looking really good. Now we can go ahead and come in with a lot of our um, green too. So let's see here. We have some cadmium green and then some bright yellow green. And then also one of my favorites here is some Viridian. So we'll be using all three of these today. And I'm gonna take one of my plates from yesterday. I have a little bit of this loaded up from yesterday. We're going to try to use some of this too. And I'd like to start with like little quarter size dollops of this. So I'll give you a visual on that I'm done here. All right, so about like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit of our bright yellow green, our cadmium green. Let's push those two together. And then let me show you what the viridian looks like too. So that definitely makes it a lot darker. Adds another layer to it. It's really pretty. And then I think I want to go for a little bit of a sage color here today too. So this is really bright, but I'm going to add a little bit of some black to this now. And then also some white. All right, so that's cooling that off quite a bit. So again, a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And we're getting that really pretty cool sage. 
So this is a really pretty neutral color in the home. So it's a great accent. And we're gonna go ahead and make just a nice thin line. Let's see here, I kind of swept in over my rows here. I didn't wanna do that. All right, so nice thin line. And then we're gonna make a loop and then come back to the center. And the same thing here, loop and then back to the center. And then just to kind of lightly feather that out whenever you're done. So a little line right in the middle and then loops. You can also just kind of press, let me show you this too, I grabbed up quite a bit of paint on the end of the brush. I'm gonna do a little bit of a press, leave that texture on the surface and then pull towards the center. So that's another fun way to do it too. Let the brush kind of make that shape for you So grab a big dollop of paint on the end and then just kind of push and pull towards the center. And then on that one, you can see I picked up another hint of that lighter color. And so it's getting a nice soft blend with that other green in there. So it just kind of Push and then pull. And I'm grabbing more of the bright yellow green as I pull into this. So it creates that nice soft blend into the paint. And I'm really just letting the touch of the brush create a lot of that pattern. So that's really a nice look in there. Grabbed a little bit of Viridian that created a different look. So that's, this is what's fun about having a lot of these greens down on the surface is you can push into them and then push down in your canvas and then just do a slight little pull and you've got all this really pretty texture. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more white and we're gonna go back to that cooler sage now. Start to pull that in. Grab a little bit more white. You can shift how you hold the brush, just kind of grab a little bit more of one color or another, and then just add a little bit of pressure and then pull that in for that lovely texture right over the surface. Now with these, we've got a little bit more of a shape that we're working into. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that color through there. Let's add a little bit of white. And a little bit more white, a little bit more black. Let's go back to that sage color. Now I'm gonna spin out the brush a little bit as I load it up, then I'll twist it back into a nice fine point. That allows me to get into this little point right here.
All right, and then this is actually a little bit of a feather here. So I'm gonna work back into that with a different shade. Actually, it will just be a black and a white. So I'm going to start first with a lot of white here. Still using my little bit brush, which is just a round brush. I'm gonna make sure and get that white into the surface area. Get it, I'm basically just making sure that the whole feather is uh, wet with a little bit of white here. And then I'll come back over it with a little bit of the black. Because I wanna make sure I get a nice soft blend between the two. Right out to that point. And let's rinse out and then we're going to grab some black. All right, so just pure Mars black here. Let's start at the top. I'm just going to Work around the shape and then get those stripes in here. So I do a light little push right across the surface. So just push that brush across. And then let's get that center line again. Okay, and then we'll do a few more like little bits of greenery right over the top again. So I rinsed out my little bit brush and we're gonna go into that green. And let's go ahead and push down a little bit of texture. right over the top here. All right, very nice. Okay, so our next move here is going to be to go ahead and work in a little bit of our uh, base happening here in the background. So we'll go back to a really pretty light gray. And I also want just very subtle touches of a light blue in here, almost like a slate. Let's see if I've got, well, I have a hint of this from yesterday, but basically not much because it's all dry. So we're going to grab a little bit of some primary cyan blue. And the color for 2021 is supposed to be light blue. So if we can add a little hint of that in here, it's a little accent. Let's grab some more white. Let's get that very light. And then I do want the vase to be gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a lot more of the black and then a lot more of the white, because we want to lighten it up a little bit. But a hint of that blue happening through there. Almost like a slate color. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and follow this here all the way around. Got a little bit of a shadow happening here. I grab some darker charcoal on that. And we're going to fill in. This is the top part here.
and then grab a lot more white as we work into this shape here. So as I, I don't actually clean off the brush, I keep that residual color on there and I'm just going to pick up a lot more of the white as I go and then push this into the center of the vase. And then as I work into the base, I want to actually switch brushes here. I think I'm going to switch to my mama brush because I want a little bit more of a crisscross pack, uh, pattern happening. So I've got my mama brush now. She is a half inch flat. And I'm going to go ahead and just work in here to the center. Get a lot more white. We're just smoothing this out, getting some of that flat color into the surface area, but I'm doing a nice soft blend with a lot more white just to make a really light, light gray. Just a really light color here. And I'm just going to do a light dusting here because I want to make sure that I don't lose that. Of course, working at home, you can always come back in with your transfer and work this in over the top. So really, really light in here. Grab a little bit more water, get a nice soft blend happening. And if you work flat, you can add a lot more water into it and you don't have to worry about any water runs. So that definitely helps you quite a bit. So we've got a good start here. A little bit of cleanup I had to do there. I just took a little bit of water on a clean brush to just do a little bit of cleanup there. That sometimes is a nice, helpful little hint. All right, so now what we want to do is I'm going to grab just little tiny touches of white now to get some nice accents. So I'm gonna grab that little bit brush again, clean it off, and we're gonna go in for some pure white here, and then get a little tiny touch of white on the top of the base. And we're just going to create little sketches of accent here. And now a little bit of black. And we're going to work in a little bit more shadow just right here on the edge. And just a real light, delicate touch just right in through here. 
And I actually just let that fade off because this is going to start to take prominence here at the base. So we definitely want this to just really kind of fade out lightly here on this side. And then with my black, I'm going to start to do just tiny little delicate accents around some of these little green leaves here. And we just had little tiny touches of this. Just creates little bits of shadow happening. And just a little bit, we don't need that much, just little hints of it here and there. Yeah, very nice. Okay, now we're going to continue on with our little bit brush. And then we're going to firm up all of our lettering here. So basically, you can do this with your uh, permanent marker if you want. Makes it very easy for beginners. But I'm going to go ahead and just work it in with my little bit brush and paint. So I've got, I've got it all worked out. But I do want to do a little twist into the paint so that it loads up the brush, twist it into a nice fine point. So it's nice and loaded, but again, nice fine point at the end, so it makes it much easier for you to control. And then I'm just following that lettering that's just peeking through there. And you do want to watch out for your negative space as you do these letters. So as you come around any loop in a letter, make sure that you come around the loop and not on the inside so that you don't close off that negative space. It becomes a lot trickier, especially like in the L's and the E's for sure. The E has a really tiny one. It's a really little one here on the S, so you really have to be careful to come around the outside of that so you don't close it off. It also becomes really confusing as to what your letters really are. All right, and we have these really pretty little like teardrop shapes. So I just do a little push into that and then go back to that point. Or you can just make what looks like little loops. And go right back to that little point there. I think we're done.
pretty simple. Nice, easy, fun painting. Very light and bright. And it definitely calls in a wonderful, positive message that we want to see a lot of for our beautiful year coming up, 2021. <laughs> Yay, and thank you so much. I'm seeing more people out there. Let's see, I see, um, well, somebody's got a handle I don't, I can't even say, but I, I see a wow, so thank you. Thank you, wow. <laughs> and then uh, Washita, Michelle, Shannon, Cheryl, and then I know there's a lot of other people out there watching, I can't see all your names, but thank you so very much for joining me. I've had so much fun with y'all today. Hello, yes, happy holidays. Hi, Megan. So yes, thank you so much. And again, all the supplies that you need on our website, tipsyartist.com. Also feel free to message me here, leave me a comment or email me info at tipsyartist.com. And um, I can help you out there too. So happy to help. And um, hi, Donna. Hey, <laughs> so, so good to see all y'all. But yeah, I will probably pop on live again later and do a little shop tour too. So that'll be fun. And I uh, look forward to seeing y'all again soon. But And we'll be teaching another live tomorrow. I'm doing so good. Hi, Rakesha. I never say your name right, but you always have so much <laughs> patience with me. Um, yes, I'm having a great week. And I hope you're having a very Merry Christmas, too. So, yes. All right. So I will see y'all soon. But y'all have a beautiful rest of the day. Mwah.